All right. Um, so we, um, in the lecture three, we focus on logistic regression as another supervised learning approach. Uh, so the objective is to classify the observations into a positive outcome and a negative outcome using data on features. What does it mean? It means that uh, using logistic regression, we have got two class of data, two class of observations. One of them are positive and one of them are negative. For example, if we want to allocate uh, loans to customers, some of them uh, default, some of them uh, didn't default, right? Uh, so they pay back their money. Uh, so we have got a binary, binary uh, dependent variable. We call it binary because this variable could have uh, two uh, actually values, zero and one, right? Zero means that the uh, the customer didn't default. One, it means that it is it, um, he or she has defaulted or vice versa. Uh, depends on how we define zero and one. So it's a dummy or a binary variable. So probability of a positive outcome is assumed to be a, a sigmoid function. And we talked about sigmoid function in the class, but uh, again, a sigmoid function Q is equal to um, one over one plus exponential power of minus Y. So how we de decide about y, y follows an equation, and the equation is as follows. Alpha uh, plus beta 1x1, beta 2x2 plus beta mxm. So it is dropped here. Uh, alpha is the intercept, and beta 1, beta 2, etc. are actually the coefficients of the features. What is the feature? Features are explanatory variables. In our case, for example, uh, we are talking about the credit scoring of our, our customers, or for example, the ratio of debt to their income. So different features of customers could be used to forecast the probability of default of customers uh, are called features or explanatory variables. So in machine learning, basically we use the terminology of features instead of uh, explanatory variables. All right, so uh, this is the uh, sigmoid function. As you see, the Q, which is the probability, um, has got a value between zero and one, right? So uh, it cannot be less than zero, it cannot be more than one. The value of Q as a probability is between zero and one. And makes sense, right? So the probability that, for example, tomorrow rains is 20% or is like 70% or 80%. So the value is between zero and one. Zero means zero percent, one means 100%. But the y, y could be from minus infinity to plus infinity. It could be minus 100 to, for example, plus 100, right? So there is no limitation here. Um, uh, so take this one into account as well. But usually, you know, if you go, for example, y minus Five and put it in this equation, one over one plus e in power of minus five, it would be very close to zero. So the probability would be very close to zero. So how we decide which features actually that we put in this model end up with the best result for forecasting. We say that we use a maximum likelihood estimation. So we use the training set to maximize the value of our maximum likelihood. Again, uh, usually in machine learning, when we want to develop a model, we de uh, actually divide our sample into three subsamples, including training set or training sample, validation sample, and test sample. Training sample will be used to develop model. So after developing model, we can estimate the maximum likelihood uh, i will show you late uh, uh, um, uh, 
um, I will show you how you can find out this maximum likelihood and calculate maximum likelihood in the Excel file. Anyway, uh, so this is the equation we use, which is the sigma of natural logarithm of Qs. If we, are, we have got positive outcomes, plus sigma of natural logarithm of 1 minus Q, if we are dealing with negative outcomes. Remember, Q is the probability. So this cannot be maximized analytically, but we can use the gradient ascent algorithm, uh, which means that um, basically um, uh, we need to use uh, different steps uh, determining different x's uh, here in this equation to end up with different y's and try different y's to end up with different q's to end up with the best model which actually maximize the likelihood. So the point here is that the computers nowadays do all this stuff for us so we don't need to be worried about it and we, can, we are not going to do it manually. Okay, so let's have a, a real uh, case study. Is Lending Club as a company which actually uh, lend to different customers. Data consists of loans made and whether they prove to be good or defaulted. So uh, restriction is that you don't have data for loans that were never made. So this is one of the restrictions of the data set. It means that our database is kind of biased because we don't have information about the loans which are not made. We have information about the loans that are made. Uh, in other words, those who are working in Lending Club actually uh, have got a filter at the beginning to uh, reject the request or application for the loan of those customers, which they think that they are not going to pay back, right? Uh, so basically, uh, we are not talking about the whole population. We are just talking about those uh, who are granted loan with loan. Some of those who received the loan actually uh, failed to pay back the loan to this company. Anyway, so we use only four features. In this case, uh, home ownership, income, debt to income, and credit score. And usually, most of the lending companies uh, need these four or maximum five, six features to decide if you are a reliable customer and you're going to pay them back or not. One of them is the home ownership. And if you are Owning a home is that a rent or is that owned home? Uh, uh, second one is your level of income, and then we have got debt to income ratio and final credit score. Our database consists of training sets, 8,695 observations. Out of this number, 7,196 are good loans, which means that their borrower paid back and 1,499 defaulting loans. In other words, the borrower failed to pay back the loan. So we have got 8,695 training sets, 5,196 observation, and uh, uh, yes, for the test, uh, which includes 4,858 good loans and 1,058 defaulting loans. I just uh, give you a, a point here. It depends on which version of this book you use, version 2, 3, or 1. These numbers might be different, but the whole process is almost the same. Okay, so this is the data uh, that we have got. We have got the information about individuals, if they are homeowner or not, if they are homeowner, so it's one, otherwise zero, their income level, their debt to income rate issue, credit score, and if they have been, I mean, default or, or they didn't default, in other words, paid. So as you see here, good loan means one, zero means bad. 
right. So results for lending cloud training set has been as such. Again, depends on which version of book you use. This result might be different. Uh, y is equal to minus 6 6.5645 plus 0.13x1, which is home ownership, 0. no point zero zero four one minus no point zero zero eleven and plus zero point eleven three x four x one to x four as such. So we are going to talk about how we end up with this equation in the Excel file. Okay, don't worry about it. All right. So let me go to the Excel sheet first, explain how we end up with this, and then we're back to the uh, lecture notes again. 